Why do we hate MMORPGs? Uh, the problem with modern MMOs. The problem with modern MMOs is they, uh, they suck. That's what the problem is. What's this video here? What MMOs have released in the last four years? Bless Online, DK Online, Guardians of Ember, Warlords Awakening, Soul Worker. And um, it's not looking good. In fact, it's looking very, very bad. So bad, in fact, I think that there's a decent chance if this game launches as it is right now, it's just gonna be a total absolute flop. The most widely hated monetization method by a long shot is when your game becomes pay to win. It's a question that honestly could probably extend out to the in entirety of gaming, especially after launches of games like Redfall recently. It's a question as a content creator and a fan of the genre that I struggle with a lot. It's difficult at times to remain optimistic, especially in a wave of negativity. For the most part, I try my best to look on the bright side of games, games that are newly announced or games that are old. We have become a genre full of pessimists, shouting down anyone who dares in the slightest way to defend a new or upcoming game, or the expansion of a game, an old game that may have fallen out of favor. But perhaps, perhaps there's a reason why. I at times succumb to the, the kind of hopeless feeling that many, many gamers feel. The rise of the mobile marketplace, broken, empty games, and the less obvious but still insidious creep of microtransactions. Now you might be sitting there and saying, but of course those are the reasons. Why wouldn't those be the reasons? Although I want to point out here that those reasons apply to the entire gaming genre right now. It's not limited to just the MMORPG genre. In fact, in some cases, it can be even more egregious. So why MMORPGs? And I think a large part of it is the scarcity, the scarcity of the win. The game that we have been looking for and hoping for for so long continues to just elude us, not appearing where we want it to, not showing up in the places we need it to. There's just not enough of a good thing happening in the genre for us to dispel some of the major issues that are happening the way you can when a game like Redfall releases, but then you get an Elden Ring or a Tears of the Kingdom. There's happiness to be found, and in the MMORPG genre, the happiness tends to be found in games that are old. These are the reasons why I think we keep heaping dirt on any new game before it's even really been released, just shoveling that shit right on top of it. It's because we think the bullshit is there before we can actually see if the bullshit is actually there. But let's jump into it and we can hurry and get to the part where you tell me I'm wrong or this gets posted to Asmongold's thread and he tells me that I am wrong. Whether it's Cyberpunk 2077, New World, Fallout 76, or Redfall, players are fed up with games launching in broken and unfinished states. The sad part of this is that it isn't exactly a recent phenomena, at least not as recent as many people imagine it to be, especially in the MMO space. Age of Conan, Vanguard, Saga of Heroes, and Warhammer Online all struggled mightily with incomplete launches that led to their maintenance modes or closures. Final Fantasy XIV was so damn bad, they closed it and relaunched it. MO launches historically have been plagued with issues. Those who played World of Warcraft in November of 2004 probably still remember the server issues. Something put very well by Justin Olivetti in this article from Massively Overpowered in 2022. We all know the tired joke. The biggest MMO launch failure was also the most recent MMO out the door. It's hard to remember how bad past ones are since our memories filter that out. But I can attest to the fact that WoW's was as rough as could be. The big problem was that even with the high demand during beta, Blizzard was woefully unprepared for the stampede that occurred at launch. This resulted in flooded servers, enormous queues, and players simply not able to log in, sometimes for days at a time. Let's just say that MMOs have always been a project. The work kind of begins again at launch. 
So why are we so upset now? Have we lost our patience? What makes the issues in these new games any different when we've been dealing with these struggles since the server down chat rooms of EverQuest? I think it might be the frequency of disaster, coupled with the distinct absence of success. The problems are numerous in new games. Sometimes they launch with game-breaking bugs, destroying entire economies multiple times in an instant or preventing players from even playing the game. Other times they present players with a barren and bland experience by launching too early. It becomes clear quickly that the game was unfinished, lacking in content, especially at endgame, which many players rush to. Hell, even the mid game has suffered with many relying on repetitious questing as a way to just grind yourself to max where the game will actually begin after 40 or 50 hours. Bugs and cues are expectations of MMORPG launches, and they can eventually be forgotten, as we've seen with games like WoW and ESO. But lack of content at the end game, or in the case of games like Age of Conan, after the damn tutorial, will always sour players. New World is a prime example of a game that launched two years too early. The bugs and exploits only highlighted deep design problems and content voids that decimated a game that had some strong points to it. But perhaps that's the problem. Some strong points is not enough for an MMORPG anymore. Perhaps especially not now. MMORPG players have, in my estimation, become more discerning. The launch that WoW had in 2004 has in many ways become unacceptable. Even more than that, the failures of the genre have left players downright pessimistic. It's simple human psychology. At a certain point, it's difficult to be more optimistic when you keep getting let down. When you have even moderate expectations and those moderate expectations get let down, you lower the expectation and you continue to lower it until you're just expecting it to be bad. At that point, a certain level of confirmation bias steps in where any issues that you were already expecting to be bad will just wreck the entire purpose because if one thing is wrong then everything surely will be because that is what we have been trained to experience because historically when one thing has been bad other things do fall apart mmos rely on so much in it so many different moving parts that simple failures are tend to be catastrophic and it's not even just the games that launch either, it's the cancelled ones too. The ones that get players excited about them. And then they they lean into this, this new generation of MMOs and then suddenly it's just gone. Or games that have loyal followings that close because they've been in maintenance mode because the company decided that it wasn't working enough. We all probably have that story of a game that we played that close when we didn't really want it to, or a game that we were waiting for that didn't launch. The disappointments are numerous. In the MMORPG space specifically, there's been little respite to any of it. We've been clinging to the games that eventually ride the ship for years, perhaps for too long. World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, Elder Scrolls Online, and even RuneScape are all arguably past their prime and yet they hold up the genre on their arthritis riddled needs. In the broader genre of gaming, there have been tremendous games since those MMOs launched. For every Redfall, there's an Elden Ring. That can't be said for MMORPGs. For every New World, there's a Lost Ark. There hasn't been a shimmering release for the MMORPG genre in almost a decade. Years go by when the most anticipated launch is actually just an expansion for an old as hell MMO that may now be older than some of the people playing them. Formerly anticipated giant MMOs like EverQuest Next and Project Titan were cancelled, leaving many to wonder, is the Riot MMO next? Ask any MMO players about monetization and you'll probably get a groan, some muttered curses about cosmetics and pay to win. The reality of the genre is that while it has always been an expensive hobby, I mean hell, Convincing my parents to pay a box price plus a monthly fee for a video game was no easy feat in 2001. But over the past two decades, we've seen the gradual creep of microtransactions. Experience potions, cosmetics, alternative currencies, dungeon access, random loot boxes, enhancement rolls, reduced death penalties, 
mounts, bags, pets, level boosts. The list is endless in the ways companies have tried so hard to find new ways to part you from the money you keep so close in that aging wallet you bought at Hot Topic. As gamers, as MMO players, we're aware that games cost money, that developing an MMO is incredibly costly, and that continued development doesn't just spring from the nether carried to players by a winged jawstrife haze. But it's when that need for funding hampers the fun of players who cannot or are unwilling to pay additional fees that the frustration boils over, sometimes into outright revolt as we saw with Diablo Immortal, or in the myriads of other games that have walked back proposed changes, like EverQuest 2 just did with their pay to raid feature. This is especially nefarious though in games that include PvP pitting those that pay against those that play, with the former often having clear advantages. Players are exhausted by monetization, and it has quickly become one of the largest issues for any new upcoming MMO, with companies scrambling to tell you that of course their game, their game has no pay to win. And ignore the fact that pay to win has kind of morphed from being no microtransactions two decades ago to le like less microtransactions now. But you can't talk about microtransactions and pay to win without another bane to MMO players. And that's mobile. The size of the mobile market is undeniable, as is its impact on the genre. It's not just the number of MMORPGs that have shifted towards mobile or spawned mobile versions, but the devices have served as a testing ground for many of the gameplay beats and monetization that have become such a pain in the dick to the broader MMORPG player base. One that, as uncomfortable as it sounds, is a lot smaller than the mobile player base. Autoplay features, limited UIs and action sets, riddled with instances and gacha microtransactions from your phone directly to your PC. Many MMOs that have been announced recently are offering a sort of pseudo mobile through streaming, a way to at least make it appear like the game is being built for PC and then ported to mobile. Something we'll get to see firsthand if it works or not with Throne of Liberty later this year. We interrupt this recording for me about five days into the future from when I was recording this originally, where I had a little bit more hopes for Throne and Liberty than I do now, a game that seems very much to just be, again, a little bit more like a mobile port to a PC with a focus on autoplay and things like that. This didn't age very well, and that only took about a week. Well, I guess this video is a bit more timely than I first thought it might be. Anyway, back to the old video. I think these issues are all pretty universal, and Sadly, I think the trend is growing, not receding, at least not yet. Are there pockets of the gaming space, pockets of the MMORPG space that are really trying to avoid this? Yeah, of course they are, but they're a bit like an oasis in a desert. Those are getting harder to find, but I have hope. I believe in MMORPGs. I believe in the genre. If I didn't, I wouldn't be devoting so much of my time to making content like this, videos like this that all I can do is hope you enjoy. I believe in the strength of MMORPGs and what they can do, the positive impacts they can have on people like me, people who struggled mightily with social anxiety as a kid, but found ways to socialize from the safety and comfort of my home. MORPGs still allow me to connect with people from all over the world. They still let me jump into a place where I can feel the sense of achievement that is so vital to the human experience. I hold on to this idea that we are just one launch, one success away from being confident and happy in the MORPG market again. The same way that Jedi Fallen Order was able to scrape back a little bit of faith in EA when it was thankfully devoid of the incredibly aggressive microtransactions and shallow focus on live service multiplayer that plagued Battlefront. I don't know where it will come from, what MORPG will launch in a playable state without the kind of greedy microtransactions and lean toward mobile that has kneecapped so many games. Maybe Star Citizen will launch completely, or perhaps it will be a combination of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen and Ashes of Creation. Or stick with me here, maybe we'll be truly shocked and it'll be one of the multitudes of NC Soft MMOs on the way. 
or Amazon Game Studios learning from the failures of New World and doing well with their Lord of the Rings MMO. Perhaps it could even include swimming. Maybe we'll be looking to new and unproven studios like the team making PAX Day or Chrono Odyssey, or even the hope of many, largely due to its pedigree with other games. The Riot MMO, as shaky as that looks at the moment. It's kind of funny that the MMO so many people are pointing to as the savior of the genre might actually never launch. It's funny and, and a little sad. I honestly have no idea where the next big MMO is going to come from, which one is going to be successful enough, complete enough, and monetize in a way that's not terrible that we can actually enjoy it and be happy about it. But I still remain optimistic that it will happen. I have to, don't I? I mean, that's kind of what MMORPGs are all about. This continued hope and this dedication and pushing even when you fail, when you fail at your group experience, when you fail at the, the raid that has been destroying your guild for months, the ability to overcome that eventually through, through time and effort. And all we can do is just hope that eventually we'll get the game, the MMO that we deserve, the ones that we want, the one that we will invest our time and money into for a company that is worthy of that dedication. And so I want to end this video with something positive. I want to hear from you. What is your favorite MMORPG story? Something that you really loved about playing a game? Is it a raid that you were able to defeat? Is it a friend you met? A partner? Is it some kind of something you built in some game that allowed you to? What is what is an MMORPG story that you just love thinking about? Maybe it was finally maxing out a skill. I mean, I remember when I when I got to the master level in Ultima Online with any skill, and I was shocked that I was able to do that. Let us know down below what it was for you. My name is Redbeard Flynn. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today. I look forward to sharing a virtual world with you all sometime soon, one that we can all call home. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.